Hello there. Welcome to this little challenge of mine where the goal is to be taking Williams and in the first season win the championship. That is going to be the goal. Honestly, I think it might be a little bit difficult, but we're going to try and get the championship or die trying. This is just going to be a one season challenge thing. So we are going to be focusing the science for the maximum and we're going to see if we can maybe snatch that title from Red Bull. Now, the reason why I think Williams has a decent shot at this is because they aren't too far behind in terms of development. If you can have a look here, Red Bull has about 100 uh, low speed cornering on us. They have basically twice that in terms of medium and a little bit more that in high speed cornering. But the car isn't necessarily bad. And I do want to try and do a bit of a challenge like this, which means that we are going to be focusing intensely on to design more so than anything else and that we are going to be kind of pushing the most that we can over the course of the season in order to get this challenge done. Unfortunately, that does also mean that Sargent is uh, most likely going to have to uh, be the sacrificial lamp here. We are going to be picking up Alonso. He is just uh, that good. And worst case scenario here, we might actually end up sacrificing Albon as well and go for Gasly and Alonso. To make this happen and i think we might actually have to go for that i'm actually a little bit unsure on ghastly stats but i do believe they're better than uh better than uh albums but before we do any of that we are going to go ahead here and have a quick look at the car and what we are going to develop so we are lacking a little bit in basically everything compared to red bull so the first thing that we're going to do is to rapidly fix that by going all in on a few designs here. So in this case, we're gonna get basically already with this, a lot of what we're lacking. It's gonna hurt the engine cooling, but that is a sacrifice that I'm willing to do. And because we want these pieces as soon as possible, we are gonna rush them. But the main thing here is that we just want them done for Baku. We're kind of throwing away three races here, giving Red Bull a little bit of a uh, advantage, but as long as we can get this chassis, the side pods, suspension, uh, underfloor and maybe red wing if we're lucky for Baku we're gonna be we're gonna be very very happy so the first 50 period here is gonna go into what I usually do which is gonna be the underfloor it is just generally good for everything we could potentially consider putting it into the suspension here that way we get low speed cornering we get brake cooling but the underfloor honestly is just a better option altogether it gives us the dirty air tolerance we need we are gonna be following a lot of other cars and again, the main boost you get from wind tunnel and CFD isn't what you're seeing here. It's what we're going to be seeing on the next underfloor that we make. So while it is very tempting to say that, oh, this isn't boosting our car that much, it's uh, not really worth it. Reality of the situation is that we're going to have a pretty massive boost on the next one that we make. And that's where we're going to see huge gains. But even this is pretty huge. That's half of what our deficit to Red Bull. And that other half we can actually get from the suspension. So if we develop fast enough here, we can potentially have a car that is Red Bull worthy come Baku, which uh, is basically what we had going for us with 1.6 sliders, but it won't be as extreme this time around, I hope. Um, but for now, as I said, side pods and suspension are going to be the main things that we want to get done quick. And again, we are going to do what we did in the last guide where we focused on cooling for the side pods and the uh, and the uh, suspension. This gives us again more cornering, gives us that 10% energy cooling, more than makes up for what we're losing. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we are gonna rush all the initial parts here, mainly because of the fact that we kinda need to, to be competitive come Baku. And that is gonna be the main goal. So the first set of parts where everything is gonna be rushed, but it is a good reason for that. It is so that we can, as I say, be competitive in Baku. We don't want to research. So we can actually blast through the cost cap very early here and not really suffer too much as a result. So with the suspension with the underfloor that we're currently making, we should be caught up the Red Bull in terms of low speed cornering. Of course, they can make uh, upgrades that will bring them ahead of us, like bring themselves ahead of us again. But for now, this is looking good. And within a month, we'll have four new parts. And potentially here, we could, I guess, be a little bit competitive come Melbourne. Potentially here, I believe it is uh, like 39 days from now. 
of a guess there. So come Austria here, Australia here, we could actually be slightly competitive. And that is going to be the goal. Just develop the car quickly and become competitive as quickly as possible. Now, as I said, we do want to replace the drivers here, particularly uh, Sergeant. He's unfortunately just a little bit too slow for what we want to try and do here. And while it would be tempting also to switch out the aerodynamics chief here for a better one, that would probably also benefit us a lot. I don't think there's any better aerodynamics chiefs that we can actually pick up at the moment. It would be Dirk de Beer, which would actually be a quite a significant upgrade. But I'm a little bit unsure how much this would cost us for breaking contracts. We are breaking Dirk's contract, we're breaking Kenyon's contract. And the first thing that we want to do is drive us. But I'm definitely picking up, pick him up later. And that's going to boost our car a little bit more. In terms of the facilities here, we do want to also upgrade the factory. But that's not necessarily a need to do immediately thing. So as I said, first things first, we are going to go ahead and replace... Uh, our first driver here with Alonso, if we can nab him. And we'll be putting him in the car instead of Sergeant. So we'll have to figure out how much money we need to pay him because I don't actually remember how much Alonso won. So let's say that we give him 10 million. Again, doesn't really matter. We're just here for one season. And we'll give him half a million in sign on bonus. But yeah, we'll keep Alban for the first couple of races at least, and then we'll see how he performs versus Alonso. And if it's bad, we'll have to deal with that once we go. As you can see, contract declined. Not happy with uh, with what we proposed. So let's have this for 15 million plus, I guess, 750,000 then. I guess 16 is fine. But yeah, we are going to need uh, to get Alonso on board. And a lot of the races this season is going to be condensed. This is just going to be one fairly long video. Uh, I want to have this as just a one-off thing. So, apart from the beginning and the end, most of the races are going to be fairly condensed as a result here. And the buyout fee here is actually quite massive. <laughs> We're paying 10 million in buyout fees for Alonso. So, hopefully it's going to be worth it. We're definitely going to need to get some more money if we're going to keep on rushing parts. But it is a risk that we'll take. We'll hire Alonso. And with that, we are going to be forced kind of for the moment, at least to keep Alban in the team. But that isn't necessarily a bad thing. So that is good. Alonso has been hired and we are now ready to just speed along to Bahrain. We're not going to have any pieces for Bahrain. So we're just going to speed through that uh, race as we go. Mike Crack, see you signed Alonso. He's not really happy about it. And uh, I do... I do worry though, did they actually sign over at Aston? Uh, who did they sign, I wonder? Did they promote for share? I think they did. That could actually be also very interesting this season. Uh, for the pick right here, we are going to probably do a little bit of balance here. We don't really want to push him too hard. So we're going to do a little bit of resting. But yeah, we are going to focus a little bit in the middle ground here in terms of going too aggressive on, say, the gym training. We do want to keep them rested. If we can keep the stop times 2.7 seconds, we'll get into the chance of mistake down. I think I'm happy with that. So that is pretty much it. But yeah, we're going to jump into Bahrain. We're going to see how we do here with the Alonso. And we are probably going to try and pick up gas later on. But money is a bit of a concern. So we definitely need to do well here. And I think what we can guarantee for the first three races is that we're going to have one driver in the points. And that is kind of what we're going to be going to be working with to get a little bit extra money. We don't really have any other other option. One drive into Q3, both drives in Q2. And we'll jump into Bahrain and get started with this challenge. The first race of this challenge went uh, swimmingly. But one hour drive of Salonso here. Uh, just a couple of seconds behind 7th here, which would have given him far more points. But uh, Alban here had a horrible event. And I'm not actually joking when I said he had double digits yellow flags. He was causing spins, running wide, small crashes, bumping, basically everything that you can imagine. He was unfortunately involved in. But uh, for now, we're just going to power through Jeddah. 
and we'll see where we stand once we actually get some upgrades going into Australia. So we actually got the first edition of the Underfloor out right now, but I don't think we're going to bother manufacturing it. And the reason is mainly that it is a it is a bit of a boost, yes, but it's going to be a single-use Underfloor just for uh, Melbourne at this at uh, this pace because Melbourne is uh, a couple of weeks away. Would it be prudent to do so? Probably. Uh, but the main thing cons that concerns me at the moment is actually financially, if we can afford it, so to speak. Because we did put in CFD time, so this underfloor is actually pretty decent now in terms of giving us a pretty significant upgrade. Let's have a look at it. As you can see here, this is basically almost 100 medium speed on its own. If you remember, uh, Rebel was 0 0.160, 170 ahead of us, so this is a pretty huge gain. Um, what I want to figure out now is what do we want to do in terms of boosting this even further because what we could do <clears throat> is go ahead and give it a little bit more of a boost by putting in even more of uh, CFD time but I think we'll place that somewhere else probably the suspension I'm thinking but the underfloor, as you can see here, it's not really a bad idea in terms of gaining performance. But I'll have a little bit of a look and we'll see where we place that second period. So I had a bit of looking around on the stats here. And what I think we're going to do is make an actually completely turning focus underfloor. Now, we could, of course, also put more CFD time into it. But I think what we're going to do is put it into suspension and then into front wing the next two periods. So this is going to be our underfloor, which is actually going to be a massive upgrade. It's going to put us to the forefront of high-speed cornering with just this one. So we'll have to see what we do. We might make another underfloor version after this, which is, again, more focused on the other two uh, aspects because that would, you know, boost those a little bit. Um, but we'll have to see because having high-speed cornering ability would be nice too. But we're going to have some races going forward that's going to be focused on low-speed cornering. So... It's a little bit of a hard one to cho uh, to decide on. But we are going to be rushing this uh, underfloor too. We want it done for Baku. Even if we rush it, we're not really going to get it done in time, I think. So what we could do here with 48 days, that's going to be the goal, is that we can actually just have it run normally. And that way we should be able to make two of them for Baku, no problem. And then we can put those engineers onto a different project. So we're going to get the chassis done now. Uh, immediately and what we're going to do here is actually go ahead and design that chassis sorry not design the chassis we're going to go ahead and design our front wing and again i said that we want to save safety time we are going to do that we're going to put in suspension first so we get a little bit extra cooling low speed cornering the entire thing but we are going to go ahead and make a front wing that is solely made on low speed cornering and as you can see that this is going to be a pretty significant boost we'll have to see if we can handle the dirty air tolerance um, it could slow us down quite a lot if we, you know, play our cards wrong. But in worst case scenario, we'll have to just regain it somewhere else. Maybe even use CFD time to make that happen. For now, though, we'll put all the engineers in on this. We'll get this done in 20 days, which means that we have plenty of time to get it done before uh, Baku. So I think, again, we are just going to run it normally. Uh, just rush, but normally. That's ironic as that seems. And we are going to get rearing done with side pods. Then we're going to get suspension done. Which is going to be a little bit close. Because we are going to be running kind of out of money here. So I think what we are going to have to do. Is just skip that underfloor. In terms of manufacturing. Because our manufacturing here is pretty slow. So if we start now. We'll just barely get this done for Melbourne. So we'll get the chassis done. Which also puts us financially in a troublesome zone. So the underfloor design here will not be will not be making that one because straight we basically cannot afford it. That is the main concern there. Now with the side pods here, we want to go ahead and make a new design. And this design is going to be that rear wing. Now the rear wing here, we're actually just going to do the very simple thing of uh, not rush it. We're just going to put six engineers on it. It'll do the same as if we rush it. So that is going to be fine. It'll save us a little bit of money. And the money that we save by doing it like this should allow us to uh, hopefully 
make up for it a little bit <coughs> in terms of uh, in terms of making those sideboards for one. But yeah, I think we might need to sacrifice a couple percentage points here just so we don't lose too much dirty air tolerance as much as it uh, saddens me. We probably are going to have to do this just to keep ourselves somewhat afloat. So we're going to put six engineers on this, run it normally. And we're also going to go ahead and get the side pod design manufactured. It's going to be a pretty huge boost. It's going to give us a lot of engine cooling. So let's just go ahead and make two of those for now. And we are, you know, running it pretty close right now, money wise. But we'll have to see if we actually end up picking up gas there or not. Because right now, we probably are not going to be able to. For now, the sponsor obligation here for Alonso, we're going to just have to deny. But uh, we'll get through Jeddah, and then we'll see exactly where we stand in terms of uh, our performance. Alden once again had a bit of an incident, but we we'll just won this time. So we ended up down in 13th. Alonso is in 8th. Considering that we don't have any upgrades, I still say that this is good. A bit uh, negative for us is the fact that the Red Bulls have basically won 2 for both races so far. That is going to give them a healthy lead but we should have for at least one of the cars a bit of an upgrade coming in now for the next race now because i said that we were going to get a car into q3 we did lose a bit of money and we also have the design ready now for the suspension so what we're going to do of course is go ahead and design a new suspension immediately and we're going to be putting all of our safety and winter allows into this suspension now the reason why we want to do suspension is because low speed cornering is kind of hard to come by and getting that up is going to be kind of important um, because it is, as I said, hard to come by. But also because of the fact that we get a lot of extra brake cooling from the suspension itself. Now, because of that, we can also go ahead and rush this project. We're not going to get this done before Baku. So that's going to suck quite a lot because we need to make this one and then remember another one to get the full effect. So CFD is painful to use with designs. There's just no way around that. With that in mind, we are going to go ahead and manufacture this suspension, but we're going to be skipping the next one. So we'll go ahead and make this. Uh, we'll have one ready for Melbourne and we'll have probably enough ready for Baku that we can make a little bit of a difference. So we'll go ahead and make two and manufacturing wise here, as you can see, uh, we'll be struggling a little bit to actually get things ready for the race itself. 10 days, 12 days. If I remember, we'll have a chassis side put and suspension ready for probably Alonso's car. It seems to be the more reliable one. We'll probably have those three pieces ready for Alonso's car come race uh, day number two. And we'll have a little bit of a look before basically the weekend what two of those components do for the car. So we'll see where we're at in a just a sec. All right, here we are. These are the differences between two cars. Uh, Albert's car has a new side pod. The car of Alonso has the chassis, sideboard, and suspension. And we can already see a pretty nasty divide in terms of low speed cornering, but we can also see the same in terms of high speed cornering here. That is pretty high. Brake cooling advantage too. Do, do lose a little bit of engine cooling due to that, but uh, that is what it is. It's because he doesn't have a new chassis. But this does, again, boost our car pretty high up on the cornering one. We do lack a lot of medium speed, which we will be getting from the underfloor in particular. Um, but we might actually have to, again, just make another underfloor where we give up on top speed, uh, sorry, high speed cornering in order to get more medium speed if we want to get this to succeed. But the car right now is looking a lot better already. Once we get, of course, the DRS help, once we get the, the other parts we are missing, we are still missing three components here that we haven't actually put on the car yet. We're going to be looking a lot more competitive. And if we can actually remember to get the chassis on to uh, Alden's car as well, I think we'll be looking really, really, really good this, uh, this race. So let's head to Australia and see if we can perform. Actually, uh, we might be looking at what could become the challenger's first win. Uh, we are into the... Uh, uh, Australian Grand Prix. We have three upgrades on Alonso's car, two upgrades on Albans, and currently things are looking really, really good for Alonso. He is uh, out on the hard tire. We're going to be pushing them to basically till the end here. We can expect Verstappen and Perez to kind of do the same on their medium tires, but we'll be planning on going onto probably a soft tire here, but the degradation is so much lower than we anticipated. 
that we might actually be able to stay out on these hards till the end. So we'll have to see what we do. Safety car, virtual safety car, and we stay out till the end. Or do we want to pay on to the soft here? It's going to be probably a little bit hard to decide. For now, though, we'll stay out and we'll see where we end up. It does look very likely here that we will be able to get Alonso a very early win already by uh, Australia. We have somewhat fresh uh, soft tires. We have uh, worse uh, mediums ahead of us. But the main concern is straight up going to be the fact that they're in a DRS train. That is going to make overtaking potentially a little bit of a pain here. But if we give uh, energy before the straight, hopefully we have enough to, you know, push and get by. That's really the only thing we can hope for here. Because if we can't, then we kind of maybe have thrown away a win, which would be very, very unfortunate. And apparently here I've also saved a little bit too much fuel on Albin and by focusing on Alonso's fight. Now, he is up in second, and honestly, I'm fine with letting him stay there for a little bit, harvest a little bit, um, because if he uh, if he stays there, everything's going to be good. For Albin, though, we should probably push and try and get uh, sixth place here, maybe even fifth if we are maybe aggressive enough on the push here. I have been focusing a little bit too much on Alonso. Alonso actually gets the overtake done on his own here, and potentially that is the final nail in the coffin. And we secure a win here in the third race with just three upgrades for Williams. And getting the team championship, I think, is going to be a little bit difficult. But potentially here, taking the... Uh, taking the... Uh, what's it called? Taking the driver's championship for this challenge is definitely doable. As long as, you know, Alonso doesn't on the low side now. <laughs> turn into Alonso and the curse... Uh, that he is under the size to rear its ugly head. We are kind of cursing him now because we have, might run out of fuel here. But luckily enough, we uh, are currently on the Merc engine. And that thing is uh, very good on its fuel. So luckily that saves Alonso. But I almost put ourselves in a bad position there by focusing on Albin after we, uh, we got something done. But yeah, Alonso has won. Uh, three upgrades. Once we get them all, we're going to, of course, be winning a little bit uh, winning more Kombaku. That's going to be interesting, particularly with that new underfloor. That is going to, again, add so much more cornering to the car that it's kind of insane. But this is an incredibly good start. We also snatch Vasa's lap. And with this, I believe we actually do gain on Red Bull by a point. So, things are looking up. We'll have to see if Alonso can catch Verstappen and maybe get the driver Championship. That is what we're going to be trying to do this challenge. Second edition of the underfloor has been completed. And with that, we're of course going to go ahead and manufacture it. We want this manufactured before Baku. And as you can see, this is a pretty massive increase, particularly in the high speed compared to the second edition. So this underfloor in itself is kind of wild just because of that. Now, we don't really need high speed. So honestly, it probably would have been better to make a different type of underfloor. But this is the one that we opted for making, so we'll just have to live with it. And we'll go ahead and make three of them, because we'll be running with these for probably quite a while. Now, in terms of the next design that we want to make, I think we're going to make a chassis here. That's going to be focused on uh, the things that we do not focus on. So we'll be alternating a little bit, get a little bit of top speed back into this. As you can see, with this design, if we were to use it, we'd lose a lot of high speed. So this is basically just here as a generator for... Um, expertise for the drag reduction and the engine cooling aspect of the chassis so it's not great but we're gonna have to do a couple of those designs as we go as well so we'll get that underway we have inspection failed here that's basically just a front wing and a rear wing and the thing is we're going to be making new ones before the next race anyway so it doesn't actually matter now because also the fact that we are going to be just be doing one season for this challenge it doesn't actually matter what we focus on in terms of research so what we're going to go with here is airflow middle. Probably going to take a bit of hit or we could go for cooling. Let's go for cooling and we'll see what the rest of the pack does. Now for the front wings here, we're going to make three of them to get to begin with. Uh, we do need to make those suspensions too and we only have three slots. So we are kind of limited on what we can do. That is a bit of a problem here. Now, I am tempted to make a side pod following the same idea that we had with the with the previous edition, where we kind of focus on what we were lacking on the other one. 
But I think what we're going to do is do it like this, where we get some engine cooling, get some drag reduction in on this one. And again, we are not going to be making this sideboard. We're going to be making the next edition of the sideboard. Because again, we are going to be doing the science rather than research because we want to see the effects this year. Rare wing design has been completed and we're going to immediately go ahead and manufacture that one. And for this one, we're going to gamble on two being enough uh, because it's a rare wing. Unless we slap the back into a wall, it should be fine. And we are going to need some time to get the... Uh, Get the suspension that's done in two days done as well so basically just trying to balance things out a little bit and i'm thinking that we keep on making rear wings that focus on uh do we want them to focus a little bit on cornering maybe put in a little bit of cornering and airflow sensitivity work onto them maybe and again we're just going to make alternating uh concepts like this so we can get a little bit more of a boost it's not going to be a huge boost but the rear wing we make after this one is going to be better than the one that we currently have. So it's going to be a bit of an alternating project, if you will. I haven't actually tried something like this before. So I'm interested in seeing if it actually will work as I hope. That's also going to be very, very interesting here. Yeah. Sponsors VIP experience for Baku. We're going to approve of that because we're going to have a completely new car. <coughs> and we're going to go ahead and start yet another design. In this case, I think what we want to do is just another suspension again and we're going to make another one that is focused on cornering brake cooling airflow and this one here we could also put in a little bit more effort onto the medium speed because that is what we're lacking and as you can see compared to the one that we compared to the suspension that we currently have this would be a fairly decisive upgrade so we're going to make it like this um drag reduction isn't really something i would focus too much on the uh suspension anyways this isn't a design we're gonna end up manufacturing so it's not a big big deal for the time being we need to wait for uh, the uh, rear wings to be made and we did get airflow focus changes rather than cooling ones so we'll just have to deal with that as we go there we are rear wing has been made and we're gonna go ahead and immediately make that suspension and the question now becomes, do we need to rush it? And I think we will. We'll sp spend another 300,000 here to just rush them so we can get a full set for both cars. Uh, and I think that is going to be the play here. So for now, we'll speed along until Baku Grand Prix. I'll keep on working on the parts and we'll see what the car looks like then. All right. I just want to show you quickly just how much of an improvement we made on the stock car that we got at the start of the season. So... This car over here, Cart, uh, Cart Williams Car 1, is basically all the stock parts that we had at the start of the season. And this car over here is the new car with all the upgrades that we have made. So as you can see, uh, in terms of top speed, we haven't actually lost anything. We lost basically 0 0.01 kph, barely anything. But we gained a ton of stats elsewhere, particularly in the low speed cornering, uh, almost 200 here. Well, more than 200. We are lacking a little bit less than 200 right here in the medium. We are falling a little bit behind here. High speed, we have gained a 250. We have lost some dirty air tolerance, which isn't that surprising. It is kind of what we sacrificed for speed. And we've gained both cooling here. So honestly, this car is already a lot better. But uh, again, once we get another CFD period into it, it's going to be even better. But right now, let's say that we took it and we compared it to, say, the Red Bull. What are we looking at? in terms of competitiveness. So we like the acceleration, that's just due to the engine, but we are beating them handily in low speed cornering ability. We're lacking a little bit of medium and in high speed is even less of a contest. So right now we have a car that is the best car in DRS effectiveness, the best car in low speed, the best car in high speed. And as such, we can kind of already start fighting the Red Bulls, but this is also where we're gonna start plateauing, which means that we have gotten all sources of easily gained progress you know we've already pulled that off and as such red bull is probably going to get a car over the next four or five races that is better than us again but if we develop kind of quickly kind of neatly we might still be able to somewhat cling on to them and that is going to be the hope here in terms of getting this uh challenge done so for now we'll jump into baku we have the sprint we have the race let's see how we perform with this new uh car so to speak we have our first victory here sprint pretty straightforward and simple 
so we can be happy with that. Unfortunately, Albin gets stuck into the arrest train. Otherwise, I think he might have actually secured second place here, but uh, we will definitely take this. It's a good, uh, it's a good showing here. Let's be honest, and this does give us a very good starting point for the race itself. Alonso should, unless he crashes, basically have the first place under lock and key now. So just a bit of a demonstration that we are fairly quick now. Uh, we have Alonso winning again. We have Albon in second. We unfortunately did not get quickest lap here, fastest lap rather than quickest lap. But Verstappen and Perez finishes pretty badly. So right now we are going to take advantage of the car advantage that we hold. And we are going to push and see if we can actually get Williams a uh, championship here in season one. So... It is looking good. Again, I'm not going to be having a lot of the races involved because honestly, it's not really that interesting. But for this one particularly, we just pulled away at the beginning and then we just kind of kept the gap going. Science was kind of running with us for a while, but we broke free and that is basically it. I'm also going to need to kind of condense the video a little bit. So most of the races will be left out as a result. We'll be focusing on the development aspect of making a car that is going to be uh, basically able, a team and a car for that matter, that's going to be able to win the championship in season one. Now, if you're interested in races, I will be making a race strategy guide with uh, the other information that comes out of this, which will be coming out uh, the day after this video. So look forward to that. It should have a little bit more information on the race strategies that I've used and generally how to pull this off strategy wise. Our car is still looking very, very good here. Q3, we are one and two and three, but we have put in a new engine and new ARSs, so that might have had a little bit of an effect. But yeah, currently and for the foreseeable future, we are going to be somewhat dominating, so we're going to be skipping most of the races themselves unless we have some pretty big incidents. But honestly, in the races previously, there's just been a couple of virtual safety cars, nothing that's just really had any sort of effect on us, and that's why, again, most of it is just going to be left out. So keep that in mind. But as Red Bull starts skating on us again, you'll probably see a little bit more racing uh, in the future part of this video. Just as a bit of an example of how good the current car that we have is, um, it's Alonso's fastest lap here. He did a 30.411 here, but that's not actually the interesting one. Alonso did before that a 29.1. Now the lap record around this place is a 31.3. Three. So he beat that by a good, uh, well, in this case, a good 2.2 seconds. So the car is actually incredibly good right now, particularly in Alonso's hands. Alban is doing the best that he can, but he is not keeping up with Alonso at all, unfortunately. So with Alonso's win here in Miami and Alban's second place, we have now gained a decent chunk on Red Bull already. And we're now just eight points behind Verstappen. So within the next race, unless we have an incident, we should potentially take the lead of the championship, which would be amazing. In the constructors though, we have a little bit further of a gap to go, but right now it's looking very promising. But of course we need to remember the fact that Red Bull probably doesn't have all parts upgraded yet. And uh, we will have to deal with that in one way or another. Now we actually have started the next ATR period and we have a chassis design completed tomorrow. But I'm a little bit unsure where I want to place this. So I think we'll be waiting with using the ATR period until we get... Hmm. We might actually use it immediately from the chassis here, honestly. I think that is going to be the play. Fail front wing, not really an issue. We'll just replace that. Sponsorship obligations, um, no. No, thank you. We don't need any more sponsorship of sponsorship sponsorship obligations, in all honesty. I am going to go ahead here, though, and get uh, some more front wings made because we are going to be using them for a little while longer, although I'll just make two. Because what I'm thinking of doing with the design here now with the chassis, we're not going to manufacture this one. This is one that we made for the purpose of increasing our expertise. And as an example, now we can actually see how what kind of an effect that had on uh, on the car. So if we were to make a new chassis right now, it would give us a little bit extra top speed, tiny bit of cornering, tiny bit of engine cooling. But as you can see, it is a very, very minor upgrade. But of course, if you do stack a bunch of these, it's going to have an effect over the course of a season. And that's kind of what we're doing here. 
Now, on the other hand, what we aren't wanting to use this, uh, this uh, CFD period for is probably going to be to get a little bit of a boost going for the front wing. And in particular, I am thinking of doing something like this because while we don't really need airflow sensitivity right now, it is something that would be nice to have in the future. Getting also that medium speed cornering would be nice because that is the one thing that we are really lacking. So doing this is probably not really super recommended or anything like that, but we're, we are going to be using the safety period here on the front wing like this. So we'll be making two wings. And we'll be aiming at boosting the dirty air tolerance for later on in the season when Red Bull is probably going to catch up to us again as they get more parts and hopefully boost our medium speed a little bit as well. So we're not going to be using this front wing really for anything. It's just here as a bit of a boost piece like we usually make them. And we are going to go ahead and rush this one again. We're going to be rushing everything that we are making with uh, CFD because we want to get that out quick. And we do have an extra engineer that we could put on, say, something that we are designing for just the purpose of the expertise. But honestly, we need extra days for that, so it doesn't really benefit us to do so. So for the time being, we'll leave things as they are. Although we do have the cycle design coming in just seven days, so let's just speed along to that. But before that, I'm going to go ahead here and get some pieces made. You see where we actually are with everything. Do need to make another underfloor, so let's get that in the way. And we'll have to see next CFD period, we might actually go ahead and use that on the underfloor or the rear wing. I'm a little bit uncertain what would be the best bet, but uh, probably do want to manufacture a couple of rear wings for now too. That is not a bad, that is not a bad bet. Front wing has been manufactured, so we're slowly catching up on the parts here. Let's make a suspension for now. Uh, I think we kind of have to. Yeah, just to be on the safe side. I'd I'm actually losing track on the past. That's the main problem with making so many designs. But the side pot has been designed right now. Again, this is one that we will not be using. Instead, we are going to go ahead and use that as a base to develop a new one. And this suspension, I'll have to see if this is actually an upgrade or not, but I seem to remember that it wasn't. So for now, let's go ahead and make another side pod. This one focused on basically same things as last time. But as you can see, the same thing as the chassis, we gain some top speed, we gain a little bit extra engine cooling, a little bit of cornering ability, so we could make this as a small upgrade. But again, I think what we need to do is just uh, kind of focus on what we what we need here. So thinking that we do something like this, get a little bit of top speed back. We had to sacrifice a little bit of cornering to do this, but we'd give us a lot of top speed. But I think, again, we're just going to make one that we'll not be using. We'll be skipping another iteration. Maybe we'll do that for most pieces. We make three iterations before we make one, uh, mainly just to make sure that we keep up with manufacturing and we keep up with the rest of our uh, parts, so to speak. With that in mind, though, let us go ahead here and speed along to Imola. And hopefully, we'll have another good race. So we basically had our first quote-unquote incident in uh, Imola here where Alvin has picked up some underflow damage after running wide did cost him a lot of time but he is back on to well hopefully winning ways Alonso also here as you saw beat Paris out so he's also in a very very good spot here to get something done the rest of the cars around here are all on used tires so hopefully we can have Alvin quickly get back up into position I don't think it's going to be much of a challenge honestly so We'll see at the end of this race if we get him back up into a podium place. So it didn't actually take Albin too long to get up into the podiums. Just needed everyone to pit. But everyone has gone on to hard tires here. So no one else is planning to pit again except for us. Now Sainz uh, basically gap it to Alonso is big enough that Alonso can pit again safely. No worries. The problem here is going to be Alonso. Uh, sorry, not Alonso. Albin. He might be in a bit of trouble once he actually pits, but we'll see. So, unfortunately, we were not able to get Albin back up into the points. He had to pit again. Uh, just a couple of seconds behind Verstappen. We are far away from the podium, though. But even then, um, win there for Alonso. And let's be honest here, Albin would have come in second if it wasn't for the fact that he had that running wide, getting underfloor damage, and generally just getting parked for a while. So, a bit unfortunate, 
but again, I'll be happy if that is the biggest incident we have going for us. But Albin has been having a lot of issues. I assume he has the uh, lower control um, thing going for him, which is going to suck. But it is what it is. We'll just have to deal with it. But Alonso has now taken over the championship lead at the sixth race. And uh, we haven't overtaken Red Bull yet. We still have a lot of work ahead of us in that department. We have yet another design complete. This time it is another suspension. And just to double check here, this is not a massive upgrade, but it is a small upgrade. So for now, we are going to have a look at uh, the damage results here. We have some destroyed underfloor, some failed parts. So first and foremost, let's just go ahead and replace those like we usually do. And we're also going to replace that underfloor. And then I'm going to have a bit of a look and see here at what we're looking at in terms of the development. So if we were to make the suspension here, it's actually a pretty decent upgrade. So I think we might go ahead and make it. But I just want to be on the safe side here that I am not doing something silly and check a design against it. So that's what we're going to do first. Is a design that we make going to be better than what we are currently being given? And just looking at these stats, I am going to gamble on that being a yes. Hmm. Yes, we could sacrifice a little bit of brake cooling. Yeah, this is a little bit weird. I don't know what I did last time around, but it definitely... Oh, it's because I'm lacking the airflow front like an absolute donut. So yeah, we could actually do another one. It would be another slide upgrade. Uh... Hmm. For now, though, I think we're happy with the suspension that we have. And I'm tempted to do a little bit work on that chassis because we have kind of forgotten it. So I'm going to do another one like this. And then we'll make an, an actual new chassis for the car. And I think that is fine. So for the time being, we are going to go ahead and manufacture this suspension. Make three of it to begin with. And I think that is good. Should probably have a look at what we have in terms of other parts here, because we did suffer just uh, a lot of damage just recently. And we definitely do need to make some side pods, so let's just make two for now. We are going to have a lot of spare parts come the end of the season, and that is kind of the thing, one of the things that I'm worried about. Uh, that will waste a lot of uh, a lot of cost cap doing this, but honestly, it's fine. It's kind of what we have to do. And as you can see, this is the railing that we made that's made for cornering. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just make another design immediately. And we're going to do the same thing again, where we kind of focus on cornering. But I'm also going to add in a focus on... Now we're going to do this. And then we'll make a new one so we can actually boost the stats that are kind of falling behind. Because this would still be a decent, uh, decent boost in terms of cornering. But we need to mitigate the losses here before we do anything like that. So do one more project. And then we'll make something happen. We have Monaco coming up now. So we'll jump straight into that, see how that goes, and then we'll deal with that next project, the front wing, afterwards. I'd say we might have given Alonso a little bit too much of a dominating car when he can take the Williams at Monaco and uh, lap up to sixth place. Albin, on the other hand, he had a bit of a bad quality. He actually started at 11th, if you can believe it, and he actually made it up on the podium ahead of Verstappen. So this is uh, basically Red Bull kind of imploding in real time. Um, funnily enough, so I don't know. Is this a challenge anymore? I thought it was going to be a little bit harder, so we might need to redo this at a later date on hard difficulty. I thought I wouldn't would have a bit of a struggle here, if I'm honest. So yeah, I definitely miscalculated massively here. But yeah, as you see, Albin made up for a very bad quality. We had a rain quality, so he ended up in uh, basically the woods. Now, driver championship then, Alonso has now a very healthy lead over Verstappen. But again, I do expect, that, expect them to develop the car later on. Albin, we do want to try to get a 1-2 if we can. That would actually be massive. And we have now caught up to Red Bull and we're just one point behind. Let's see how the development proceeds. But I do believe that we do actually have a little bit of a uh, design coming in immediately after, if I remember. So let's just get that out of the way, the front wing of course, and we're also failing some car inspections now. And for uh, car 2 here, we basically need to replace the entire thing, which means that potentially we are running out of parts, and it's just Spanish Grand Prix in just four days. So 
I'm wondering, do we have enough replacement parts? We do not. So, uh, we're going to sacrifice a little bit here, probably. Uh, because car 2 needs... Uh, it needs the replacement parts. So I'll be, of course, manufacturing them in a second. But for now, it looks like we're okay. Spain is uh, in three, you know, four days. And after that, we have a little bit of a break. So we should be able to get things going. Now, for this front wing, I do want to see if what this is. This is the weird wing that we made, which is basically, you know, the middle ground. So what we're going to go ahead and do is immediately make another one. I do believe we put safety time into this thing unless I am completely mistaken. So let us go ahead and design a new front wing. Because as I said, I think we put safety time into this to get the medium speed boosted and also the airflow sensitivity. So I want to see now what this uh, front wing is actually going to be giving us. And yeah, this is a pretty significant boost for the dirty air. Good brake cooling too, for that matter. Small boost on low and high speed, but it's definitely a good boost on the medium, which is kind of what we're, we're currently lacking. We are basically very dominant on the other parts, but we were lacking that medium speed. So this part now is actually really, really good. And even if I want to sacrifice something, let's say that we want to sacrifice low speed, I don't think it's worth it. So this is probably the best slider that we can hope for. We could go for getting some high speed cornering on the front wing, but honestly, I don't think it's worth it. So we'll get low and medium as well as the airflow front. Don't really need any more sensitivity right now. Don't really need any more brake cooling. But what we could do here is that we use the next safety period on the rear wing, get a little bit extra dirty air tolerance. So we get that higher and also get a little bit more of a boost in DRS and top speed. So honestly, this is looking good, but I think we kind of want to rush this project. Although we don't really need to rush things anymore right now. So we'll just take it slow. Mainly because of the fact that we are starting to fall behind on parts. And if we fall too far behind on parts, that's going to be a bit of a... Well, bigger issue. So currently we're manufacturing what we can. But we are going to need to manufacture more. So what we're actually going to do here is we're going to slow development down slightly and actually get the upgrade to the factory here. That is going to leave us low on money, but we're on 29th of May, we'll get more money next month. And we have a race in four days. So honestly, I'm not worried that we are going to struggle for cash here. It should be basically pretty much uh, pretty good. Pick crew is uh, exhausted, but I can't believe this is from races. It doesn't seem to work properly. It's a little bit weird. So we'll go ahead and ignore that. Uh, we can shut down the race in for six days. That's not actually an issue. It's basically just uh, driver experience. And in our case, well, they don't really develop much. So it's not really a big deal. We can actually have a look at it right here. Well, Alvin decided to show me up by actually developing. And I should just have them on balance right now. To I want to see how the balance actually works for development. And so far, it's worked pretty well for Alvin. We do want to keep him going up on the braking there. Uh, but yeah, I'll get my May settled and then we'll see where we go. Once again, Fernando snatches victory, but because it was Spain uh, and aggressive strategies aren't really that effective here, it's just barely snatching victory. But at least we do finish ahead of Verstappen, gain a bunch of points on them. Um, Albon didn't have the best uh, weekend, unfortunately, which is becoming the norm. We'll just have to deal with that. Driver Championship, though, Alonso extends his lead. And we now have taken the lead for the constructors as well. Looking good. Canada has been completed, and once again, we have a uh, Alonso on the top step. However, it was a safety car, five laps before the end. Lasted till uh, the end, unfortunately. If not, I think Alvin here would probably have jumped uh, potentially up into the podium. But once again, he just has very, very bad luck, and that also allowed Red Bull to snap fastest lap. Now, Alonso, that's fine with him, still moves ahead in the championship. And we still pull away a little bit from Red Bull here. So honestly, it's okay. We can accept it. Although, honestly, I would have preferred it to be, uh, uh, you know, danger free, if you will. Now, financially, we are still doing well, but we are kind of behind on parts. So seeing the suspension, front wings, uh, underfloor all being manufactured here, definitely going to help us. We have 11 days now until we go to Austri Australia. Austria. And we actually have a side pod and chassis design coming in in the meantime. 
Now, I do want to have a quick look here at where we are with the warehouse. Um, Cassie, front wings, we kind of caught up. Rear wings, we do want to make two of these before we go to all the... Uh, to the next race uh i think we're gonna get new side pods so i don't really want to make more of those underfloors are up to date i think we're gonna make a suspension and potentially a chassis because i think i want one more chassis design before we actually you know make a proper chassis so that should be a okay and that should be us basically then caught up actually for the most part so let us have a look at this new side pod design i know you have low morale you keep on saying so and uh, yeah, we need one more design before we can actually make one. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Now, it's still six days until we get a new safety period. And as I said, I think we're going to put this one into the rear wing. Get a little bit extra top speed, get a little bit extra DRS effectiveness. Maybe a little bit of dirty air tolerance because we are struggling with following cars already and overtaking. And since we haven't actually had really any rain races yet, we are probably going to have some later in the season, I would assume, unless we're really lucky. And we're going to need dirty air tolerance then to actually overtake without DRS. So we'll have to deal with that when it comes. But as I said, it would be nice to have uh, kind of the tools to make it a little bit easier. So since we have focused on drag reduction and basically engine cooling for the most part here, we have gained a little we'll be, we will be gaining a little bit of top speed with this upgrade, a little bit of cornering, and mostly just a little bit of more engine cooling, which is nice to have. But honestly, I think we're done with upgrading the, uh, the side pods for the time being. And we'll just do it normally. That's fine. Again, I do want the upgrades to the factory finishing before we start really, really manufacturing anything new. And if I'm not mistaken, this chassis that we've done should be another one that's focused on speed and engine cooling. So we'll need to make another design anyways. And again, this might be the final chassis design before we start focusing a bit more on the underfloor suspension again. But the lower the expertise is, the quicker it goes up and the more of a gain you'll be seeing if you invest into it. So chassis here is kind of a, uh, a result of that. We gain some engine cooling, gain a little bit of speed, a little bit of cornering ability, but we probably would have gotten more if we focus on cornering. But this does help with the balance of the car. And... As long as we're first in cornering, focusing on some of the other aspects of it is perfectly okay in my book. Now, we are going to do, as I said, one more design of both chassis and sidewalls before we manufacture them. And we'll have to see what we do with the front wing and rear wing here when they're done. But as I said, rear wing is probably going to get the next CFD period. So I had a little bit of an issue with the audio here. So what we're going to be going through first is just the result from here to, I believe it is Coda. So... Basically the second half of the season for the most part, but uh, we'll just be going through them kind of in quick succession. So after the Austrian Grand Prix, Alonso is in charge, Albon is down in sixth, hasn't really had a good start to the season, but Alonso on the other hand is doing very well, kind of carrying us, and we are now in the lead. Pretty simple and straightforward stuff. In uh, the British Grand Prix, we once again secure a 1-2, which we can be very, very happy about. Then in the Hungarian Grand Prix, we get another one too. So currently we are on a pretty good roll here. Result wise, we can't really complain. The car is on rails and I'll be going over the development of the car after we go through the results. I'll kind of just split them up a little bit. For the Belgian Grand Prix, we secure another one to finish. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't have the best sprint, but that's fine. Is that a sprint in Belgium? I think there is. I don't remember. But anyways, uh, sorry about that. Let us continue. So at this point, we are leading uh, championship with over 100 points. Albin is gaining. The goal here is to try and get him second in the championship. But Alonso is just a little bit too quick for Albin to really gain advantage or have any chance of winning a race. But at this point, also, as you can see, we have a fairly healthy lead over every single other team. So... It's looking incredibly likely that this will be a fairly dominating season in a Williams. The next race in uh, Canvort, I believe, the Dutch Grand Prix, we once again secure a 1-2. Not really that surprising at this point. And in the following Italian Grand Prix, Alonso wins, but Albon has a bit of a uh, bad one. If I remember correctly, he had a bit of bad luck with spins and running wide. 
So that cost him potentially a second place or at least a podium. In Singapore, we had a little of the same. Alonso wins kind of effortlessly, while Albin is kind of struggling. It is a theme that we've been seeing this season, so there's nothing we really can do about it. It is unfortunate. In Japan, we see a bit of an improvement here. Albin is back up into third, but he's still behind Verstappen, meaning that he doesn't actually get anything in terms of the whole gain for points, which is very unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, can't really do anything about it at this stage. And for the next race in Qatar, pretty decent one. We have uh, Alonso winning, as usual. Albin second. And Perez down in third, with Verstappen in fourth, does allow Albin to gain a little bit on his rival here for second place in the championship. Now, the next race here should be Coda. And we secure a 1 2 here. Verstappen down in fourth. Decent haul of points gain on uh, Albin. Sorry, on Verstappen. And I have to apologize, I have to kind of do it like this, but again, I lost the audio. I don't remember everything I said. So we're going to do a summary. First, the, how the races went. As you can see, they went fairly well. Next up, we'll go through the development. And uh, I'm just going to summarize how development was done rather than how the entire thing turned out. Now, in terms of how we did car development, it's actually incredibly simple. We were doing what we were doing earlier with CFD and wind tunnel time, where we'd put it into a part, we'd rush it, because again, CFD wind tunnel time works on the units, so you can rush the project to get it done as quickly as possible and still get full benefit. Once we do that, we make another one, and that is a significant boost. And we basically were doing that with every single part that we could, for the most part. In this example here, we're doing the rear wing. And as you can see, even just this first edition rear wing is giving a pretty significant boost in terms of top speed, the ice effectiveness, everything. So we also like to invest a little bit into the dirty air tolerance because it is a weak point of the car, particularly if you get rain. So in this case, I elected to go for a little bit of dirty air tolerance because again, we are going to be making a different rear wing where we can turn that down, turn up the other stats again, and that is what I decided on. Now, the other way we were developing is basically how the way we were developing this chassis, which is that we take the stats that we don't want, in this case, drag reduction and engine cooling, and we maximize them while minimizing what we want. In this way, we get expertise for drag reduction and engine cooling, and we can make a later edition of the part that is actually an upgrade. It's a little bit, it's not really convoluted or anything like that. It's actually pretty straightforward because of the fact that we focus on cornering ability, our expertise on cornering is way higher than drag reduction and cooling. And in order to compensate for that, like we're doing on this underfloor, we're focusing the stats that we are kind of lacking to some degree. And once we make, once we've done a couple of rounds of this, we make a proper cornering one and they'll have extra top speed extra uh, airflow sensitivity or whatever we need. Now we made a bunch of these parts uh, more than I kind of get to go through unfortunately but all of them are work the same way there's no real magic here. It do does suck that I lost so much of uh, the footage but unfortunately I'm gonna have to cut this kind of half of the season incredibly short just due to it. So that was how we were developing the car. We also did take a penalty for ERS during this time but uh, I can't actually find the exact clip. So that was the only penalty we took over the course of the season. Two ERSs for both cars. So I just realized that I made a bit of a huge error. So at some point here, the cable apparently became untucked without me realizing. And as a result, since Silverstone, I haven't actually been recording any audio. So you've probably already seen it, but after this point, I've been condensing the uh, footage from uh, Silverstone add a little bit of voiceover, but generally the uh, the gist has been the same. We've been winning pretty fairly easily. We've been developing the car with the idea of kind of maximizing stats. And the idea there is pretty simple. We focus on stats that we haven't been using. Um, let me use this as an example. What we usually would do with the, uh, with the chassis is this, yeah, to get a good cornering build. What we have been doing after we got the cornering build is that we actually do the opposite. We focus on the things that we don't really need much of, and we make chassis that we haven't been using. So I just want to go through this very, very quickly because it's a different design philosophy than what I usually do. And we can use the chassis as a kind of a pointer here. So as you can see for this chassis and this chassis, we've been focusing on top speed and engine cooling rather than anything else. And as a result, we get a pretty decent upgrade from this chassis to this chassis 
which also includes a bit of top speed. And we're going to be seeing that also now in the new chassis because we made three useless ones. And we are going to go ahead and have a bit of a look at that with design and research. This is going to be the final piece that we'll make. I'll try and edit something together to make the previous uh, part seem to make sense. But yeah, it is, uh, it is not great. But this is basically what we were trying to do. Sacrifice a little bit of cornering to get a huge amount of top speed. And it has worked. It just that took us four designs to pull it off though. Research is probably going to be far more efficient at getting you uh, progress than what we've been doing here, but that is A-OK. -okay. Now, as I said, um, the results have been pretty good. We haven't really had any incidents and I'm just giving a very quick summary now. I am going to edit something to hopefully make it make sense because again, I've lost about three hours worth of audio. <laughs> Not even that, four hours, maybe even five. So that sucks massively, but uh, it's my own fault for not being observant enough. And we'll get into Mexico now and the last three races. But honestly, at this point, I'd say the uh, challenge that I had here has been working pretty well. And honestly, from Silverstone and going forwards, there probably wasn't much need of uh, a voiceover anyways with uh, the results that we've had. Let's jump into Mexico and see how we do. We have a red flag incident here in Mexico. Here we are, then, looking at uh, 12. It's Porsche and a Red Bull, by the looks of things. Doesn't look like the Red Bull really got any damage, but Porsche has been a walking uh, incident machine. And honestly, this isn't necessarily a bad thing for us. Now, do I want to stay on the same mediums? Probably not. But uh, as you see, Alvin doesn't really have much choices in terms of tires. So we're going to go onto a new medium and basically just invert this a little bit. It's going to help. For Alonso, he has a bit of a rough uh, strategy. We're basically just trying to mimic what we were doing with uh, with uh, our other boy. But what I'm thinking is that we'll actually just put him on the hard from the get-go. Uh, he is starting first. And if he tucks behind someone, that is going to work out beautifully as well. So that is just going to be how we handle this uh, red flag. As I said, we'll just have to Not handle it. But honestly, today, the car has been incredibly like dominant, although... Albon is struggling a little bit in quality. So yeah, it should be good. Let's see how this uh Let's see how this goes. If Alonso can hold on to the lead going into that first corner. Looks like it's gonna be difficult. And uh Verstappen has actually picked up a penalty too, so that is good for Albon. But yeah, Alonso's gonna struggle a little bit, but as soon as the softs medium start falling off, he'll be uh he'll be back up front for sure. Another decent one-two here. We can't really complain at this stage, honestly. Now, Verstappen ended up pretty far down, so that allows uh, Albin here to gain a lot of points. Three races to go, one sprint, still everything to play for. We might still get a 1-2 in the championship. Yet another good result for Alonso. Unfortunately, Albin had three spins, which all destroyed his tires, which is why he did four stops. And that is also why he couldn't keep up with anyone else. So it's a bit unfortunate, but that could potentially be that Albin's challenge stops here unless Verstappen has a bit of an incident. But uh, the fact that we're 200 points ahead is amazing. And we actually do have a potentially of breaching the uh, 900 point barrier, which also would be amazing. Now with that said, there's two races left, Las Vegas and also, uh, also uh, Abu Dhabi, of course. We have the final suspension design. We are going to be getting a lot of those final edition designs right now. Underfloor has been delayed to 19th of November. I don't know if I can actually approve of that delay because, well, it is actually within the time, so it's not a big deal. But yeah, a lot of these parts are getting delayed right now, and that is a little bit of an issue. But honestly, it is uh, it is salvageable. Now, currently, I believe we are manufacturing a uh, suspension, so that's why we can't get it started yet. But that is fine. It's not a, not a big deal. We just want to get the final edition car ready for Abu Dhabi. Now, I'm a little bit uncertain if I was uh, clear earlier in terms of how we designed the car parts, because again, a lot of the designs got kind of lost under the loss of audio. So I'm just going to go through it here really, really quick. The way that I designed in case of suspension, the underfloors, everything here that has gotten a boost of stats and hasn't been manufactured is basically that for the parts that we didn't manufacture, we focused on things that the part weren't really good at. In this case, we might focus a little bit something like this get a little bit more top speed into it, get a little bit more low speed, medium, high speed cornering ability, things like that. Um, but we wouldn't make the part. We just want to increase the expertise of, say, the drag reduction 
so that the next time we make a proper part that has kind of what we want here, which is of course low speed cornering, we also get an extra bit of top speed on with it as well. So it's basically just a uh, basically just a way of development that allows us to make parts that we don't need to manufacture. And I really wish I could have a look at that, which would go to the workshop here. Chassis is a good example. We've actually made eight chassis designs so far, and we're currently making a ninth one. But as you can see, from this one to this one, we were focusing on top speed and engine cooling for the main part. And once we actually made this chassis, it became a pretty decent upgrade compared to this one. So as you can see here, upgrading top speed, upgrading cornering, upgrading engine cooling. But it did take a few additions to get there. And now we're making the fourth edition of this one. And that's basically how we developed most of these things. We have done one edition that we didn't need to. We've been doing that for the underfloor too. We've been doing that for the suspension here. And that has led to, as you can see now, a pretty sizable upgrade in everything that the suspension is. So it is just focusing on the low expertise stats because again, once your expertise gets to a high enough number, it becomes less important. And uh, that is why we've been focusing on other things, so to speak. Now we have the United States Grand Prix here very soon, but as I said, I do want to get the final edition of these four pieces on a car before that. So we're gonna go ahead and focus on getting that done uh, pretty rapidly here. So we're gonna go ahead and get the suspension made. Again, final edition. We are gonna rush this. We have a decent amount of cost cap remaining. So even if we really wanted to, we could go ahead and just uh, emergency manufacture, but I think rushing is just uh, good enough at the moment. And we are also gonna go ahead here now and get another design, which is the side pod. And we're gonna do the same here with this thing. We're just gonna go ahead and rush it, get it out there. It's mainly a speed based thing because again, we have focused, uh, we've taken a few, some of the stats, the cooling that we gained, a little bit of the cornering, and we put that into getting more top speed to kind of round out our stats a little bit. And that is the goal. Now, apparently we will not reach completion aid if we do that. So let's go ahead and do just two then which means that we'll have one for each car for Abu Dhabi, which is their main goal. And in four days and seven days, we're gonna have the chassis and the underfloor respectively. So the chassis, we might just go ahead and emergency manufacture it for both cars for this race. That I think would be fun because again, it is Las Vegas. It is a uh, top speed track. It's gonna cost a 3.3 million, well, 4.4 total. But honestly, yeah, we're not gonna plan it. We're not gonna be using this money for anything else. So let us splurge and get a bit of a upgrade here for both cars. And this is actually going to boost us quite drastically in terms of the car performance. And that is kind of what we wanted to see here. So I'm just going to go through and see what we actually have manufactured so far. We should have one suspension, which we will be giving to uh, Alonso. I want to see how quick his car actually is now. While he still is lacking an underfloor and also lacking a, uh, uh, a side pod. So already we're six, six quickest in top speed. The arrest effectiveness, we've lost a little bit there, so I think Rebel maybe have caught us, but our car is still incredibly good. But of course, it's not gonna be this good next year. It's gonna be pretty bad next year. Compared to the Red Bull though, we have a pretty sizable advantage. And that is the thing. And we can probably see that on the Ferrari as well. For most teams here, we have a pretty sizable advantage in cornering, and we are catching up to them now too in the uh, top speed department. We're just slightly behind Red Bull. So, we have developed a decent car. It's not going to be great next year. We'll have a look at that some other time. But, uh, yeah. Sorry about that. Got a phone call. But yeah, that's basically how we developed the car. And I'm looking forward to seeing how it ends up. But now, though, let's head over to the United States and see how we do in the Las Vegas GP. Another race. Another one, too. Another Alonso record at this point, I guess you could say. We gain a couple of points on Verstappen, nothing major. So if we want Albin to end up P2, he's going to have to probably assassinate Verstappen. But we are at least looking nicely uh, closer to get over 900 points. So with that said, let us get the car set up. I want to see uh, what monstrosity we've made this season, how it uh, compares to the rest of the grid. And then we are going to jump into Abu Dhabi. So the underfloor now is done, but it's only four days until Yas... Uh, Marina, so we're just going to emergency manufacture. We have the cost cap to do so. We will not need to buy any more parts. So it's not a big concern. So with that said, and the manufacturer here, it'll be the suspension will be done in time, but um, as you can see, two out of three. So we'll just wait two days to get that uh, side pod finished. And then we'll have a look at what the car looks like. Or honestly, we can actually just uh, approach the race uh, weekend 
and have a look there to make things a little bit easier on ourselves. So chassis has been installed on both cars. The front wing is on both cars. Rear wing is good. Side pods need to be installed, but as you can see here, they're basically just a half a kph of extra top speed, some acceleration, a little bit extra other stance here, but nothing major. The underfloor, massive amount of kph, a little bit uh, of the rest, well, massive, 69. Um, but still decent, let's put it like that. So I am curious now, how does our car now, with everything that we have designed this season, actually stack up against the rest of the grid? And more importantly, how much of a shitbox is this car going to be next season with the regulation changes? So first of all, let's see where we're at in the grid. So we've actually developed Williams car here to be the first in top speed, DRS, low speed, medium speed, and high speed. Decent cooling and entry cooling. We are lacking some dirty air tolerance, so really would like this at 60 as well. But yeah, we definitely have done a fairly decent job and we're at 324 kph top speed, which I believe is uh, a lot quicker than the Red Bull and also a lot quicker than the Ferrari. So honestly, yeah, this has been a pretty well, this is actually a pretty effective way of developing your car and might actually be usable uh, to some degree. It wasn't as expensive as I imagined when I started, but that is probably due to the fact that we did develop uh, them in batches basically we make uh, made the first designs that were you know just rush designs in order to get the better pass out quick then we made stagger designs like this where we focus on the stats that we wanted in this case we wanted more top speed so we put that on these designs and then we made a cornering design with some extra top speed and this uh, chassis which basically worked out nice it did work that's the main thing but again uh, it's probably not going to be better than research because we're going to be losing a bunch of stats next year and we probably would have more stats onto next year's car had we've been doing research instead. So is it good? Probably not. Is it fun and gimmicky? Yes, I definitely enjoyed this uh, little adventure of ours. And we have actually not DNF with a single one of our drivers. Now, both Alonso and Albin have had their incidents. Uh, Albin in particular has had, I think, six or seven races this season where he's kind of bent it down to fifth due to running wide, spinning, locking up and generally just uh, using twice the amount of tires that, Al that Alonso did. But Alonso has had very, very few incidents. I'm very happy about that. Mostly because we have been, these guys have been running for not together at all, for the most part, due to the fact that Alonso is just that much quicker. But as you can see, Albin has actually developed pretty nicely. He's up to 83 average. Things are looking good. Uh, but honestly, for now, I'm gonna get done with Abu Dhabi. Then we'll see where the standings are at. And then I'm going to sit down and edit this thing because this is going to take a whole lot longer because, again, the audio issues are going to do me in. But I think I have an idea on how to make them somewhat bearable. Um, basically, from, I think it's Austria, the problem started. You've already seen it. But let me know what you thought about my solution to basically just make it more of a summary for the second part of the season because that's easy, that was pretty monotonous where we were basically just wrecking everyone doing the exact same thing over and over. Nothing really exciting happened during races. And I wonder if you'd like to see more condensed uh, formats like that or maybe some of the other series as well. Because I think that is a good middle ground for when things become very, very repetitive. For now though, let's go to Abu Dhabi and let's see if we can finish the season off with another win. Here we are with the final race of the season. Alonso wins once more. Gets fastest lap, Albon comes in second. Verstappen down in fifth. I don't think that's enough for, unfortunately, here for Albon to get second place, but he did put in honorable effort. He did have 14 podiums and a sprint win. And out of the 23 races this season, Alonso secured 21. So I think we'll have to be happy with that, honestly. So uh, yeah, we'll definitely take that. And in terms of the total points we scored, 928, Red Bull second, Ferrari, Aston, Mercedes, then we have Alpine, Alpha Tauri, Haas, McLaren, and then Alfa Romeo. So pretty interesting that Alpha actually ended up seventh, in all honesty. That's probably more of the biggest surprise. But as you can see here, Williams, you can actually make a very dominating car very easily due to the fact that they have decent cooling to begin with. So you don't really need to worry about sacrificing it. They also have decent they're following other cars and they also have decent top speed. So you sacrifice some of the strong suits of the car, but they still remain pretty decent. And as a result, you can actually have a pretty decent uh, experience. Now, in terms of the uh, <laughs> Pit Stop Championship, we ended up eighth, which isn't a surprise. I only focused on error chance. Uh, bits, our Pit Stop times became very, very slow there. But honestly, it didn't really matter. The car was good enough that where it didn't make much of a difference. 
yeah, I say that is uh, a happy end to this uh, little bit of a test series. I wanted to do a little bit of a challenge to see how well you could do with Williams. It is still a very good team to start with. It is easy to kind of dominate in the first season, but this has come at a very, very huge cost. We've used CFD periods to develop the car instead of doing research. And if we have a look at the board right now, in terms of rules and regulations, we're going to lose 20% of our airflow <laughs> for the middle for the chassis. We're going to lose some engine cooling, brake cooling, airflow sensitivity, airflow front, uh, brake cooling, airflow front, airflow sensitivity, front, middle, cooling. So I'm looking forward to seeing just how scuffed the car is going to be next year, honestly, from the regulations here. But we'll have a look at that some other time. For now, I'm going to sit down and edit this thing. As I said, there is some audio issues that I noticed at the end of the last recording. I think I have a good solution for that. If if I had, let me know if you what you think of it, if it's a good way to solve an issue, or if I potentially just sat down and just really recorded the entire thing, which honestly would have taken three, four, five more hours. But yeah, a little bit late video today as a result, but uh, hopefully you still enjoyed. It was a fun little challenge. I wanted to have it out a little bit early this weekend, but uh, it is what it is. Now, I'm also going to be making a race strategy from some of the races for this uh, series, and I'm also going to be making race strategy suggestions on terms of how you can put up the car. So if you're interested in kind of seeing where we qualified a little bit from the races, you can have a look at the race strategy guide. It's mostly finished, but that too is lacking a few pieces of audio, so I'm going to have to kind of go in there and fix that. But it should be out hopefully tomorrow evening. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And hopefully I'll see you around next time. Bye bye.